It has been said that if you wish to see far ahead in time, you must first look far back to find lessons from the past. The archiving of documents from the past and the present is an important source for architecture and design. It captures the passing of time. It is a testament to the evolution of the discipline. The following masterclasses record the individual processes of professionals and their ways of working. The Masterclass series on archives is part of the educational mission of the Norman Foster Foundation. It's presented by experts from collaborating institutions and they bring together an extraordinary body of expertise and experience. The range of archives is quite wide from books, art, architecture, design, manuscripts. You could say that the archive is at the heart, it's the core of many institutions and foundations. It's about capturing the past from diverse perspectives. If you want to anticipate a future, then the lessons of history, that as a discipline, is central to the art of archiving. For me, the archive of architecture, design and infrastructure presents quite special challenges. For example, it's not just sketchbooks, drawings, documents, papers. It's also the physicality of prototypes, of models, of mock-ups. And in its wider context, it's, it's, it's a perspective on an era a point in time, uh, the different perspectives of those who have been collaborating, commissioning, um, the critics of the period, other architects, engineers, different disciplines who together collaborate on those issues which inform the infrastructure, our environment in the widest sense from the design of a small object, furniture, uh, to the master plan for a city with buildings in between. That's really uh, a heritage for scholars and researchers in the future. And in that sense, the past informs the future for generations still to come. We tend to think of archives as something that's frozen from the past. But the archive here at this foundation, the Norman Foster Foundation, is very much alive. It's growing, it continues, it receives contributions from so many different uh, viewpoints. The Norman Foster Foundation is based in Madrid and operates globally. It was created to preserve the archives belonging to Norman Foster and to promote the dissemination of the archives contents through the materialization of architectural and technological projects related to its mission. In addition to its educational programs, research initiatives, and publications, the Norman Foster Foundation aims to develop innovative and experimental projects and prototypes. These projects are mostly the result of the Norman Foster Foundation's close collaboration with universities, research centers, public institutions, and companies. The Norman Foster Foundation promotes interdisciplinary thinking and research to help new generations of architects, designers, and urbanists anticipate the future. The foundation believes in the importance of connecting architecture, design, technology, and the arts to better serve society, and in the value of a holistic education that encourages experimentation through research and projects. Located in a heritage-listed palace designed by the architect Joaquin Zadaña in 1912 at the heart of Madrid's Jambari district, the original building was renovated and extended by Norman Foster in collaboration with the foundation's team, resulting in a new pavilion located in the courtyard. The headquarters of the Norman Foster Foundation hold the archive and a part of the architect's personal library, offering a vision of the history of our built environment through his work. Additionally, this space houses a vast selection of publications that have in turn inspired and documented Norman Foster's work during his career. Since its start, the foundation was created as a research center. 
And so, one of the library's purposes is to gather material, not only concerning design and architecture, but also for the related disciplines of art, history, theory, philosophy, and urbanism. The rooms distributed throughout the four levels of the foundation create a mix of galleries and studio spaces that house the Norman Foster Foundation's collection of models. Each room responds to the following themes. Heritage, skin and bones, high rise, flight, back to basis, infrastructure, the Norman Foster office, the city, and beyond. The model making team at the Norman Foster Foundation works on the restoration and creation of models with the architecture department, not only of ongoing projects, but also of lost models of older projects whose documentation is preserved in the archive and is key for their execution. In addition, the design unit experiments with materials for the creation of furniture prototypes and sometimes in collaboration with different entities. Documentation held by an architectural archive is a prime source for the in-depth study of the discipline. It's part of a common heritage, recording impressions of the urban experience, and holding a key for interventions into the built environment. These collections also record the individual working processes of the professionals and their ways of working. Until relatively recently, there was little awareness of the value and importance of architectural documents and archives. It was only in 1982 when an international standard for this distinct type of archive was established by the Working Group on Architectural Records, created by the International Council on Archives. The physical documentation preserved in architectural archives is the testimony of a way of conceiving the profession and a way of working that today has been replaced by different methods and tools. The main challenges that an archive of this nature must address are, first, to have the adequate description tools, and second, the task of organizing and cataloging the collection. Every architectural practice creates its own recording system, and the criteria used is often diverse by client, date, drawing number, or even according to their size or project type. Frequently, the original order is altered or completely lost. It was not until the end of the last century when interest in preserving this type of documentation began, a period defined by the use of fragile media and the exponential growth of the documents that make up each project due to the widespread use of new reprographic techniques. The choice of materials did not anticipate the need to conserve them beyond a given period of legal accountability. So many components that contribute to accelerating deterioration were not considered, such as the acidity of the paper, the fragility of organic content in paper, or the possible reaction of chemicals used in the copying process that can also damage the information contained in the plans. In preserving architectural drawings and original plans, as well as their photographic reproductions, it's essential to know the materials and techniques used in each case, since both can be contributing factors to a drawing's process of deterioration. Likewise, a series of external factors that contribute to the latter must also be considered, including environmental conditions like dust, temperature, humidity, and light, biological agents such as microorganisms or insects, and human intervention, frequent handling, storage, and exposure. The NFF Archive was established in 2015, and since then, its holdings have continued to expand. The archive team is responsible for the cataloging, preserving, and dissemination of the records, and the documentation preserved in the archive covers all aspects of architecture, art, design, engineering, landscape, and urban planning, being a primary source for scientific studies of these disciplines, as well as an important part of its heritage. Primarily, the Foundation's archive stores physical documents, but it also contains original digital media documentation from projects carried out by the Foundation itself, such as the Foundation's Pavilion in Madrid or the Drone Port in Rwanda. In Norman Foster's working method, Paper continues to hold a preferential place as a support on which he initially expresses his ideas, from quick sketches to finished drawings. Compared to other architectural collections and archives, the ongoing projects of Norman Foster and his collaborators, even up to the present, make the Foundation's holdings a living and growing archive. This condition is strategic when developing its communicative, educational, and informative capacity through the different initiatives of the Foundation itself, or by interactions with other institutions through requests from students and researchers, visits to the archive, educational programs such as think tanks, seminars or workshops, publications, or loans for exhibition. An architect's archives are seldom kept intact as numerous factors contribute to the gradual loss of documents that make up each project. 
However, right from the beginning of his career, Norman Foster took the firm decision to preserve the greatest amount possible all documentation, a choice which has assured the integrity of the collection. Archival intervention ensures the reconstruction of original sequences, allowing the information each project contains to be accessible to professionals, researchers, students, and the general public. The inventory and cataloging procedure developed by the archive is common to other types using the ISAD G description standard of the International Council on Archives. The identification and ordering system of the projects has been defined and this information is contained in the signature structure used. First, the ownership code of the Norman Foster Foundation. Second, each professional work corresponds to a four digit number established in the transfer file. This forms a correlative numerical series that evidences the development of the projects within the studio over time. Third comes the support identification such as D for drawing, S for slide, M for model, etc. Finally, there's a number that corresponds to the position of the document within the internal order of the project. The archive of the Norman Foster Foundation includes material in different support such as plans and drawings, dossiers, sketchbooks, models, photographic material, audiovisual material, awards, memorabilia, lectures and presentations, correspondence, textual records, and oral history interviews. Chronologically, the archive's holdings house documentation from the 1950s to the present day. The archive includes material from the projects of the professional practices founded by Norman Foster and academic and personal material. This can be divided into build projects, projects and proposals of the studios he founded, Team 4, Foster Associates, Sir Norman Foster and Partners, and Foster and Partners, or work of the Norman Foster Foundation, and unbuilt projects and utopian proposals created over many years with different collaborators such as Buckminster Fuller or Otto Aisha. Complementing and supporting the works of Norman Foster and the studios he has founded, the archive also houses important works such as drawings or models of relevant architects like Claude Nicolas Ledoux, Le Corbusier, Mies van der Rohe, Buckminster Fuller, Richard Rogers, or Tadao Ando, among others. On the other hand is academic and personal material related to his achievements, such as his work as a student at Manchester and Yale universities. All the plans, drawings, and panels are kept grouped by project and format. Larger plans and drawings are stored, rolled up in cardboard conservation tube boxes. However, most of the collections are kept horizontally with three levels of documentation protection, loop folder, subfolder, and protective sleeve, the latter made of neutral barrier paper or with alkaline reserve, depending on the technique of the plan it contains. DIN A4 size drawings and panels are kept individually protected and in horizontal position in top opening cardboard boxes. Having started the archival treatment of its collection in 2015, the Foundation's database hosts 226 projects that contain more than 120,000 records included into the archival management system. The open database is accessible via the Foundation's website, where all documentation, plans, boards, sketchbooks, models, photographs, etc., whose archival treatment is complete, can be consulted, downloaded, and printed. In order to respond to the demand for online inquiry, guaranteeing a more optimal dissemination, exchange, and universal access that new technologies allow, the digitization work and constant updating of information hosted in its database constitutes one of the highest priorities of the archive team at the Foundation. The aim of the archive at the Norman Foster Foundation is to preserve the documentary legacy of Norman Foster's architectural practice, as well as his philosophy and vision and those of other architects, while also participating in the dynamics of dissemination, exchange, and universal access that new technologies and society demand. The archive team, in collaboration with other units, participates in this dissemination mainly through. As the NFF is a center for the promotion of research, the presence of its collections and publications, documentaries, doctoral theses, etc. is essential. In order to respond to the demand for online consultation of the archives collections, it's a priority for this department to constantly update the information offered in the database available on the Foundation's website. The Norman Foster Foundation is not a museum and is not open to the public. It is dedicated to research and study.
However, it does maintain a program of visits from universities, architecture professionals, and institutions linked to the foundation. It also celebrates an open house on the occasion of the Architecture Week organized by the College of Architects of Madrid, once every two years on the occasion of the forum, and once a month with groups that have previously requested a visit. It is also open to scholars and scholars who wish to research the archives holdings. The Norman Foster Foundation works actively in the participation in national and international exhibitions to showcase the richness of the archives holdings. Understood as a means of preservation and as a tool for dissemination, essential to meet the foundation's objectives in terms of global, free, and quality distribution of the collections held in the archive. The oral history program consists of a series of interviews that act as an important resource for students and researchers both now and in the future. It's an audiovisual history of people who have collaborated with Norman Foster throughout his career and who recount their memories and experiences of those collaborations. These recordings augment and deepen the meaning of the archive, creating a resource for future generations. The archive itself creates a particular model of expansion by encouraging and creating research through external, national, or international groups. At the national level, the foundation has carried out the series Think Tank Archives on how to share information and make it accessible. The objective was to promote the preservation of this type of funds, the correct handling of documentation, and the appropriate dissemination of its content to make it accessible. The archive unit is also in charge of cataloging and inventorying the documents that result from the work of the architecture unit's projects and research studies. Through the many publications published by the foundation, the work of Norman Foster and other key collaborators is disseminated and made available to students and researchers. Because the foundation's primary purpose is education and promoting investigation, the archive provides the backbone and support on which all activities carried out are developed. Consistent with the model of the foundation, the only constant is change, the archive must be understood as a structure capable of utilizing memory in a campaign against oblivion that does not merely look backwards, but grows, multiplies, and expands daily, allowing new generations to anticipate the future. <laughs>